ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا اما بعد فان احمد الله سبحانه وتعالى على ما من به علينا من هذا اللقاء معكم ايها الاحبه في هذا المسجد العامر مسجد التوحيد في مدينة كارديف in the Wales فأسألوا سبحانه وتعالى أن يجمعنا وإياكم في جنات النعيم كما جمعنا على التوحيد وعلى السنة في هذه الدنيا I praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى and thank him for allowing us to take a part in this gathering amongst you barakallahu fikum in this masjid masjid at-tawhid in cardiff in the wales we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gathered us and our hearts upon tawhid and upon the sunnah of our noble prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam to gather us all with the Prophet ﷺ in the gardens of paradise. I mean, Allahumma allimna ma yanfa'una wa anfa'na bima allamtana wa zidna Allahumma ilma I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach us that which will benefit us. And I ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala to assist us and aid us so that we can implement the knowledge that we receive and I ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us firmness upon the sunnah of our noble prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. After thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I would like to thank the community here, the administration, the imam, the families. Jazakum Allahu khairan wa barakallahu fikum for organizing the likes of these seminars and these dawarats because they have a lot of benefit walhamdulillah <clears throat> as you know we are created to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ma khalaqtul jinna wal insa illa liya'budun ahsant what's your name? Asana. anta? Yeah. mega ayyaka Allah Muhammad mashallah naam as our brother Muhammad said he, he finished the ayah, alhamdulillah, surah al-dhariyat. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created the jinn. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I have not created the jinn and the human being except to worship me. لِيَعْبُدُونَ أَيْ أَيْ لِيَوَحِدُونَ أحسنت. لِيَعْبُدُونَ أَيْ لِيَوَحِدُونَ قال الإمام المجدد شيخ الإسلام محمد عبد الوهاب ذلك أن العبادة لا تسمى عبادة إلا مع التوحيد كما أن الصلاة لا تسمى صلاة إلا مع الطهارة ليعبدون والتوحيد We worship Allah upon Islamic monotheism by singling him out سبحانه وتعالى in his lordship and by devoting all acts of worship for him alone and by affirming for him that which he has affirmed for him from the beautiful names and attributes, whether in his book or in the sunnah of his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. We don't worship Allah upon our desires. Whatever we want to do, we do it whenever we feel like la. We servants of Allah. We created for that. Same way, you don't go to school whenever you want. You go to school. When do you go to school? What's your name? Hana. No. When the teacher tells you. The tell you to go to school. That's a fair answer. Where do you go to school? When? 
Nine o'clock here? Are you serious? MashaAllah. The point I'm making that everybody respect the schedule they have, right? If the school said come at 7.45, nobody show up at 11. Likewise at work, they will tell you to come at 4 a.m., you be there before 4 a.m. And we don't tamper with the rules and regulations of the school, of the job. So why all of a sudden some of us Muslims would tamper with the rules and regulations that Allah has placed there for our benefit in this life? Things that are good for us. The commands of Allah, the commands of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, are only good for our benefit, for us to be upon the path, to have a real life, a good life, a life of serenity and tranquility and peace and joy. That's why those who adhere to the deen of Allah, especially the youth, they, mashallah, they have a beautiful life, tranquility and peace and ease. Those who do not practice Islam, mashallah, they just have, like we say, ups and downs, from one problem to the other, from one issue to the other, never ends. May Allah preserve us all, and especially our youth. Now, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to talk about a very, very sensitive and important topic, which is the, our youth. I'm going to read from a lecture that was given by one of our noble mashayikh, Fadilat al-Shaykh al-Allam al-Walid, al-Doktor Salih bin Fawzan, al-Fawzan, hafidahu Allah ta'ala wa matta'ahu bil-sahha wal-afiyah, wa ghafara lahu, ولوالديه وللمسلمين والمسلمات آمين من مشكلات الشباب وكيف عالجها الإسلام. الشيخ يمنشن some of the problems that the Muslim youth they face and he will bring the solutions of that إن شاء الله تعالى into the Islam. قال الشيخ في حديثي إليكم في موضوع يهم جميع المسلمين ألا وهو موضوع الشباب ومشكلاته. وما ينبغي أن يتخذ لتوجيهه. The Sheikh when he delivered this talk, and I'm reading from the book محاضرات في العقيدة والدعوة الجزء الأول. There is a collection, three volumes, whereas they collect an, an a selection of great talks of this noble Sheikh, Sheikh Saleh Al Fawzan. And they call them muhadarat, lectures in da'wah, aqidah and da'wah. And from them this very important beneficial lecture that the Shaykh addressed this very important matter. As he said it himself in the beginning, he says, my talk to you is about a very important matter and topic and it should be very important for all the Muslims. Ariz where is the youth and the problems that they are facing. And what should every one of us who really cares about the youth should do? قال الشيخ لا شك أن دور الشباب في الحياة دور مهم. He said no doubt that the youth, they play a great role in our lives, in our societies, in our communities. فهم إذا صلحوا ينهضون بأمتهم ويقومون بنشر دينهم والدعوة إليه. The youth, boys and girls, if they are righteous, upright, good servants of Allah, سبحانه وتعالى, they help and they contribute for the good of their ummah, their communities and their societies. And from that, they will carry out the da'wah. Because from this youth that we see here, insha'Allah, bi'idhnillah, bi'idhnillah, some of them are going to be the imam of a masjid, insha'Allah. It may not be this one here, but some other masajid, insha'Allah. Because as the Muslims grow, you need more masajid of Ahlul Sunnah. Some of them are going to give sermons in Yawm al-Jumu'ah. Some of them are going to lead taraweeh prayer in Ramadan. Some of them, mashallah, they're going to give, teach the, the other, the, the young generation Arabic language. Others, they're going to teach aqidah. Others, they're going to teach tawheed. 
they're going to teach fiqh, seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and the like, ya khwan. لماذا الشباب لأن الله أعطاهم من القوة البدنية والفكرية ما يفوقون به على كبار السن. Why? Because the youth, Allah has given them something that if it's used properly, is going to benefit them and benefit anybody else, everybody. Allah given them, since they're still young, they're strong. MashaAllah, they still have strength. And they're still sharp, MashaAllah. Their memory is still fresh. It's like a brand new sponge. But what are you going to put in it? That's the question. You have a brand new sponge. Some they're going to put hatar in it. Some they're going to soak it in honey. Other people, they're going to soak it in mud. And you become a problem. Whenever you put it, you leave a mark. And you leave a problem for you to be cleaned. Likewise, some of the youth, they're not taught the aqidah. They're not taught the tawheed. They are not taught the manners of Al-Islam. Then whenever they go, they, they, they leave a mark, they leave a problem. And then you find their parents running after them. Try to clean up this mess. Before they clean this mess, they know that they have committed another mess. And then, who to blame? Of course, it's easy to blame the youth, right or wrong. You find us, grown-ups, parents, grandparents, Ankles, whatever the case, it's easy for us to point fingers towards the youth. But in reality, as Ibn al Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala says, those youth who are not doing good and they are not on the right path, those youth, boys or girls, that they don't want to practice Islam and they're giving their parents a lot of problems from one problem to another. He said, what is the problem? Are they to be blamed? He says, since the parents, they neglect their education when they were young. Those parents who did not give them the proper upbringing. They didn't give them the proper nutrition and nutrients. And they grow up like that. Some parents, they think that, okay, he works hard. The mother also, she work hard so they can live in a better house, so they can eat good food, so they can drive in a bigger cars, and then they have no time for their children. Children are left for the house, the street, the technology, the notepad, smartphone, and all of that. Later on, the children, they are not doing good. They don't want to pray. They disrespect their parents. Some of them caught up in drugs doing a lot of bad things and who to blame the parents those who didn't do what they supposed to do Ibn al-Qayyim said since the parents they neglect their children when they were young that's why that those children now who become young youth they cannot benefit themselves and most definitely the society cannot benefit from them if any parents I tried this myself and I'm sharing it with you because we all have our shortcomings. If any parents in here, they facing this problem that dear youth are giving them a hard time, sit down with them and apologize to them. Tell them, look, it's me to be blamed. I neglected you. I neglected you. I didn't spend the time that I supposed to spend with you and read with you Kitab al Tawheed, Talata al Usul, Tafsir al Sa'di, Furi Hadith. I didn't do that. Didn't do that. And how now I'm going to blame you? I apologize. It's my fault. It's my negligence. And let's do it all over again. Let's be idnillah. Please forgive me. Please accept my son, my daughter, my dear daughters. Please accept my sincere apologies. I wasn't there for you when you need me the most. I wasn't there for you. I'm responsible. Allah ordered me in his book to take care of you, to teach you the aqidah, the tawheed, 
al akhlaq to teach you about Allah, your Lord, to teach you about your Prophet, to teach you about your religion. I didn't do it. I thought making sure that you have from the material things, I thought that what what I supposed to do, I find out now that is not the case. I should have given you the Tawheed, the Aqeedah, the Arabic language, Akhlaq al-Islam. And for that I apologize again. And I will continue to apologize. And let us start a new page, inshallah, and learn together. Naam, ibad Allah. Ha'ulai shabab This youth, boys and girls, if we take care of them and find time, because you're not going to achieve progress <laughs> while you're reclining and chilling, like we say. You got to do some work. You got to do some work. You got to find some time. The same way we find time for work, for business, for this, for that, we got to find time for our children. And especially the youth. If we want them to play a role, if we want them to, inshallah, in 10 years from now, as we mentioned, they're the one that are going to be good teachers, imams of the masajid. And, and with that, they be good husbands because they're going to get married, inshallah. And so that they can teach their children, when Allah gave them children, the proper knowledge. Likewise, those girls, inshallah, they're going to get married so she can be a righteous wife and a good mother for her children. And so she can teach her children the proper Islam, the correct Islam. And we have indeed a good example in the youth among the Sahaba. Naam. Min amthali Abdullah ibn Abbas. The like of Abdullah ibn Abbas, who was from the youth in the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As. And Mu'ad ibn Jabal. And Zayd ibn Thabit, and many others amongst these noble, young, and youth amongst the companions. They because they were given the proper upbringing. They grow up upon Islam, upon Tawheed, upon Sand Aqeedah, upon Sunnah. They learn from the best of mankind, our noble Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's why they preserve this deen for this Ummah. That's why they learn, implement in their lives and disseminate it for others. وكان إلى جانب هؤلاء العلماء الأفذاد قادة كخالد بن الوليد والمثنى بن حارث الشيباني and others and there is amongst them those who taught those who sacrificed and then there is those who they were chiefs and leaders in jihad the like of خالد بن الوليد والمثنى بن حارث and other than them that's why we still benefit from their biographies that which they have left for us we read in the seerah of the companions especially the youth what they have contributed towards this deen of al-islam and this ummah of al-islam أنتم ورثة هؤلاء الشباب من الصحابة My beloved sons and daughters Amongst the youth You should consider yourself From the ورثة The inheritors of this youth amongst the companions Say to yourself I want to be like Ibn Abbas Inshallah I'm going to try to emulate his example I want to follow his footsteps you go to your father and tell him, Father, tell me something about Ibn Abbas. Father, tell me something about Abdullah ibn Umar. Likewise, you, my dear daughters, you tell your mother, I want something about Khadija.
Tell me something, a story about Hadiza. <laughs> Tell me a story about Hafsa and Aisha and Maymuna. Tell me, I want to know that. But we parents, we have to be prepared. If we know, mashallah, because we've been studying and we should, then we sit down and say, mashallah, jazakallah, khairan ta'ala ya waladi al-habib. Ijlis. Kana ibn Abbas kada wa kada wa kada wa kada. Wa ibn Umar kada wa kada wa kada. The mother too, she took her, she'd be happy when her daughter comes, 12 years old, 11, 10, 13, 17. She always said, mom, Ummi, Al-Habiba, my dear mother, tell me something about Khadija, radiallahu anha. She said, Ahsanti Su'al, you just ask one of the most important questions. With a big smile, come here. And she started telling her about Khadija. But if we don't know, with the parents we don't know, then we should be honest and we should humble ourselves. And I should tell my son, Abdullah, or Idris or Muhammad, I don't know. Sad. You may be shocked, but I can't tell you nothing about Abdullah ibn Umar. You may be shocked, but I have nothing to tell you about Khadija. But that's my fault, not yours. And now what's going to do to me? He's become a homework. Now I have to go and learn something. Or find some knowledge and say, let's learn together, see? I'm your father, you're my son, or we're going to be on the same grade now. Me and you were in the first grade. Even I'm your father, I'm going to sit next to you, and we're going to learn together. And that teach that son or that daughter a great lesson. Modesty, honesty, humbleness, to humble ourselves. Not like we want to cover our ignorance with arrogance. When my son come and ask me to tell him a story about one of the companions, and instead of say, I don't know, but let's learn together and say, did you do homework? No, I didn't do homework. Go do your homework, you see? In reality, I wasn't even concerned with no homework. But rather, Ikhwan, we have to be sincere. Aynam. Because these children, whatever we put in them, whatever we give them, that's what they're going to give back. Every container gives what? It contains. We have water in here, right? There is water. What am I going to put out of this water? Milk? No, I can't. She wasn't shot, so... How's that? Allah, Father. Namaste. طيب <clears throat> Every container gives what it contains You're not gonna pour any honey out of empty jar Real wrong Because everybody's gonna tell you what you're doing Now I'm pouring some honey It isn't empty What well, is some in there? It is nothing Now it's worse if you pour another If you pick up another jar of bleach for example and you want to pour some milk out of it. Can you do that? You see, okay, the little ones, they're like, no way. Huh? You like cereals? All right. And if you say to your mom, your dad, give me some cereal. He said, okay. And he put some cereal. And then he went to the bleach bottle. And he want to put it in the cereal. What do you say? Stop. It's not, that's not right. He said, no, no, this is milk. He said, this is not milk. Likewise, Ikhwan, if we don't put in our children's, in their hearts, in their minds, the Tawheed, the Aqeedah, the Seerah, the Sunnah, why are we going to be surprised when they grow up and start acting up? Why? Why all of a sudden some of us will, oh, I did everything for her. He didn't do nothing, man. Talking about he did everything. I did everything for my children. I worked three jobs. You see, that's the problem. You work three jobs, and those jobs keep, keep you away from them. Yeah, I didn't know. Some parents, they even say, I don't even see my children, man. I get up at 4 a.m. and leave. They still sleep. I don't, I don't come until 11 p.m. They already sleep. And I've done, I worked hard for them. Who told you to work three jobs? 
for money? La ya ikhwan, get a job, take care of your family, whatever pays the bills and for their needs, but you're not here for that reason. You're not here so that you can leave them a couple million pounds. You're not here so they can live in a big mansion. You're here, ya ikhwan, you can, so we can teach our children the tawheed and teach them the proper Islam. Because that's what's going to benefit them in their grave, right or wrong. The angels, you know the angels, right? The angels who will come in the grave. What is the first question they will ask every one of us? Is it how much money you have in the bank? Huh? What car did you drive? Where is the vacations? So what is the first question? Who is your Lord, Ahsan? What is the second question? Huh? What is your religion? What is the third question? Somebody over there? Naam? Tfaddal? Aynaam, man nabiyuk? Who's your prophet? So why some of us care about the, the, the dunya aspect and we forget about the grave? That we and our children, when we die, we're going to be asked not about money, not about mentions, not about citizenships. Some even they move from the land of Islam to the land of Kufr for some blue or purple or whatever passport. Instead of being where you can save yourself and your families from the fire. Naam, ibadullah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's the best in everything. And he was the best teacher sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he is the example for all of us, ya khwan. أخبر نبينا صلى الله عليه وسلم أن من السبعة الذين يظلهم الله في ظله يوم لا ظل إلا ظله منهم من شاب نشأ في عبادة الله. والحديث متفق عليه في صحيح البخار صحيح مسلم. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم معلم الناس الخير. Allah سبحانه وتعالى sent him as a mercy and to teach mankind. All, all khair, all good. He mentioned in a hadith that is agreed upon by Imam al-Bukhari. Well, Imam muslim rahimahum Allah. He says, in the well-known hadith, to, to all of us, that from seven people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala admits in his shade on Yawm al-Qiyamah, when there is no shade except for that, one of them is Shab, a youth that spent his, that critical stage of his or her age upon ibadah, upon worship, upon righteousness. That's why for you, the youth, boys and girls, those who are still young, take advantage of this because when you grow, you cannot reverse it. You cannot go back. Me, I cannot go back to be a young person. Whatever I have done when I was young, that's not the subject of this matter, okay? But I, what's important is that I cannot. You're still young, you can still take advantage of this great hadith, right or wrong, to be admitted in the shade of Allah and to have this great honor and this great reward. All you have to do, Allah didn't say, bring a million dollars or um, 10 million pounds it has nothing to do with your, your citizenship. It has to do with one thing. Spend that moment, those years of being young, spend them upon obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Can you shut the door, please? Spend them upon the youth. That door has to be open or not? Yeah, shut it because Zakallah. Being obedient, this doesn't mean to be perfect. Because we're not perfect. But just be mindful. Say, I want to apply this hadith. This hadith is great. I'm still young. Mashallah. Yes, this hadith still apply on me. And I'm going to take advantage of it before I grow old. And then I will have nothing but sorrow and regret like some of us have now. 
those amongst us who maybe didn't know this. Some of us do grown up, then we didn't even know about this hadith. And therefore, Allah al Musta'an, this opportunity has passed us. But you, you the teenager, you the young one, you can still apply this hadith bi idnillah. Our noble Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he took good care of the everyone, and especially the youth, the children and the youth. From that look at the wasaya of the Prophet sallallahu he said to Abdullah ibn Abbas, and he was young, young man, قَالَ يَا غُلَامِ إِنِّي أُعَلِّمُكَ كَلِمَاتِ Oh young man, I'm teaching you some words that will benefit you. إِحْفَظِ اللَّهَ يَحْفَظُكَ إِحْفَظِ اللَّهَ تَجِدْهُ تُجَاهَكَ إِذَا سَأَلْتَ فَاسْأَلِ اللَّهِ وَإِذَا اسْتَعَنْتَ فَاسْتَعِنْ بِاللَّهِ He said to him, preserve what Allah has made obligatory upon you. Preserve that. Take it seriously. Act upon what Allah has made obligatory upon you. What Allah has legislated for you, for your good benefit. Allah doesn't need us. Allah is in no need for our obedience. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Apply that which Allah has legislated for you for your benefit. Allah will protect you. Allah will preserve you. And we need that protection. Preserve what Allah has made obligatory upon you. Preserve this deen. Act in accordance to the teaching of this beautiful religion of Islam. But we have to learn it first. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be there for you, to assist you, to guide you, to protect you, to make things easy for you. When you ask, ask Allah. When you seek help, seek Allah's help subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, in another example, we find the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam addressing Mu'ad ibn Jabal. وَكَانَ رَدِيفُهُ عَلَى حِمَارٍ Once the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has Mu'ad with him, riding behind him on a donkey. And that shows the modesty of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and how kind and nice he used to be to his companions, all of them. He said to him, Ya Mu'adh, O Mu'adh, Atadri ma haqqu Allahi ala al-ibad wa ma haqqu al-ibad ala Allah? Do you know what is the right of Allah upon the servants and what is the right of the servants upon Allah? To the end of the hadith. And he was teaching him. This is the Prophet ﷺ. Likewise, we, we utilize this hadith. You're riding with your children. Boys and girls. Taking them to school. Taking them for in the park to run. Taking them for ice cream when he, when he gets hot, you know. You're taking them here to visit their grandmothers. To visit their family. So what are you going to do while you're driving? or why you're walking with them in the park, you ask them these questions. Nicely. Dear son, dear daughter, do you know the right of Allah upon his servants? Can I ask now? Who can answer this question? What is the right of Allah upon, upon us? Hmm? You, 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 you fall for being young? You're still young, right? What is the right of Allah upon us? To worship him alone. Naam. That's the right, the greatest Allah of, of, of Allah upon us, the, the greatest right عفوان, of Allah upon us is to worship him subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. By devoting all acts of worship for him. Not some for him, some for some dead person, some wali, somewhere. Every single act of worship should be for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ikhlasul ibadati lillah. And if we do that, Allah will not punish us. And we'll be admitted in the gardens of paradise. Another hadith, ya khwan, ayyuhal ahibba, ayyuhal abna. Prophet sallallahu alayhi teaching his stepson. Some of us have stepchildren. How you deal with the stepchildren? Are you going to say they, 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 they are not my children? No, they live under your care now. They live under your care and you have to fear Allah. And you have to teach them because as long as they live under your care, 
you got to treat them with kindness. Be nice to them. The Prophet ﷺ said to Umar ibn Abi Salama, Rabibuhu, his stepson, Umar ibn Abi Salama. He was a young boy. He was very young. When the food was served, very, very young. He was a very young boy. So he started eating from all over the plate. Can you imagine one of us? Your stepson, as soon as they put the plate, he began to, to eat from all over the place. What one, one of us grown up would do? Let not the grown up answer. Can somebody answer? Hmm? Eat, from eat from what's close to you. You think that's what we do? If we don't know the hadith, what would usually we do? Huh? Tell them what's right. Allah Akbar. Naam. Take one at a time, mashallah. I'm learning from the children now. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Zakam Allah Khairan. Naam. We should at that moment remember this hadith. Not to yell at them. Not to tell them, go away, don't eat with me. No. Or tell his mother, come get your son. How is she going to feel if somebody tell her that? La ya. She's the one that cooked the food. That's why we need the sunnah. Why some of us grown up make mistakes? Because we don't learn the sunnah. We don't learn how the Prophet <coughs> did things in his home, his household, and how he dealt with everybody. This is what we need to remember. The Prophet ﷺ in a nice way, in a kind way. He said to him, Ya Ghulam, nice way, nice. Sammillah, say Bismillah. Nicely. Before you eat, you say Bismillah. Wa kul bi yaminik. Eat with your right hand and also you drink with the right hand. Sometimes we see some people, they eat with the right and drink with the left. Two hands at one time. La. You eat with the right hand, you drink also with the right hand. At least if a person have a problem with his right hand, that's different. If someone's sick, someone just have a surgery. That's why if he wants to correct someone, we have, to, first of all, to observe, you know. Don't rush into, oh, he drink with the right hand. The man has a cast on his hand. He didn't see it. We should observe first. And if the man has a reason, yes, that person can drink with his left hand. Because that's all he can do at that moment. Keep in mind, some of the people, they don't know this ruling. Some people, they know it, but they left-handed. Left they write with the left, they do everything with the left. They know they're supposed to eat with the right hand, but they keep forgetting. What is our role in here? To remind them kindly. Prophet ﷺ said, eat with your right hand. And eat from that which is in front of you. And you see here, no yelling, no get away. What are you doing here? None of that. Nice. If he wants our children to grow up upon khair, if he wants our children to treat us with respect, to speak good for the elders, to respect each other, they should see us respecting one another. Not only in the house, in the family, they see that their uncles, they respect one another, they apply the sunnah. When they come to the masjid, they see us, the grown-up, apply, applying the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. We come to the masjid with a cheerful face. We come to the masjid ready to forgive and to pardon those who make mistakes because we all do make mistakes. Don't come to the masjid with the attitude. If, you have a, if I have a problem at home or at work, I shouldn't bring it here. Shouldn't. I come to the house of Allah People, they deserve nothing but respect, but kindness. They come into the house of Allah to worship Allah. If I cannot make it easier for them, at least I should not be an obstacle. I, at least if I cannot be a nice person to them and with a cheerful face, at least I should not harm them because they are coming to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. <laughs>
That's why the role of us parents is, is important, Ya Khwan. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala address us. Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, ku anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. Who you have believed, protect yourselves and your families from a fire. How are we going to protect them? In this life. By teaching them the deen. Allimuhum fara'id ad deen. وَأَدِّبُوهُمْ As Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhum has said, we protect our children from the fire it's by doing the work in this life, by teaching them the religion. The ulama, they says, teaching them how, what does it mean? If you know, if you as a parent, mashallah, you have already learned Islam, you spend some time, you attend some classes, you read some books, you took notes, and you spend some time learning the Tawheed, the Aqeedah, the Arabic language, the Quran, the Akhlaq of al muslimin teach your children. But some of us parents, we don't have that. We, we don't. We don't. So the ulama, they says, find someone who will teach your children the Tawheed, the Aqeedah, the Arabic language, the Quran and the Akhlaq. The same way, not everybody is genius and have PhD in math and physics and science. But still your children are learning math and physics and science and, and whatever. They're still learning that. How? Oh yeah, they go to school. Oh, they have a good teacher. What about Tawheed and Aqeedah? Hmm? What about? What is the schools that our children? Do we have schools for that? Do we think about, we got to get some, some, some teachers in here. The Imam alone, he cannot do everything. One person cannot do everything. Two or three brothers in a big community, they cannot teach everybody and they don't have the time. Can you imagine a clinic, right? A hospital with one doctor? One doctor, that's it. And you go there and like, oh, big, they announce it and it's, it's this big, nice, nice uh, hospital and you go there and there's only one person try to do everything to make the registration he's the nurse he's the doctor he's, and you what are you gonna say subhanallah what happened you're alone here you can't do nothing likewise our communities we just want the imam to do everything imam cannot do everything ikhwan. that's why if we take good care of our children and if we look at this we can do it together it's going to become easy if we as community, the brothers, we get together over some tea and some cake or whatever the case is, but we say, look, we're here gathering not just for the tea because I know you can't get tea anywhere, okay? But we're here for a, for a very important and noble goal. Listen, we're a community here, okay? This is our masjid. This is our community. Your children are my children. We are family here. We love each other. We want to stay on the path of Allah until death come upon every and each one of us. We want to protect our boys and girls, especially we don't live in, in the time of the Sahaba. Look where we live. Look at where we're surrounded by. Let us put hands together. Let us find a way. We want our children to learn the Arabic language. We want our children to learn and memorize the Quran with understanding, not just memorization. We want them to understand what Allah is telling them. We want to see the Quran has effect on their hearts, on their minds, on themselves, because we want them to fear Allah, not me. We want them to make the right decisions to please Allah, not because they are afraid of me from the community, the society. We want them to do things to please Allah. Let us find a way. And we can, Ya Khwan. We can. If we come to the dunya, if somebody bring you, bring 10, 20 brothers over lunch, over tea and say, look, Ya Khwan, there is an opportunity out there. If we 20 together, we put some money together, we can, in, in 10 years, we can buy the whole block. <clears throat> and there is the benefit. We're gonna, every one of us gonna be making good money in a few years. They're gonna say, I'm down. Yeah, but we need 10,000 pounds, I got 20. 
You see why? Because they see this man tell them, in a few years, man, we're going to be rich. What about our children? That's the best investment, man. The Prophet says, إِذَا مَاتَ بْنُ آدَمْ إِنْ قَطَعَ عَمَلُهُ إِلَّا مِنْ ثَلَاثِ when the son of Adam die, all of his action cut off, meaning you cannot do anything for yourself. Except three things. You die and you still benefit. One of them, waladun salih yad'u A righteous offspring that make dua. But we have to equip our youth with this, with the knowledge, with sincerity, with ikhlaq, with tawheed, with aqeedah, with seerah of the Prophet ﷺ, seerah of the companions, seerah of At-Tabi'een, Atba' At-Tabi'een, so that they want to grow to be like them, bi-idnillah. Many are the mashakil, ya khwan, we hear. SubhanAllah, it is sad. It is sad when Muslims are involved in some very bad things. And you can only imagine what those youth, boys or girls, are going through. And you can only imagine their parents, what they're going through. 17 years old who supposedly, mashallah, or they finish Quran, Arabic, he speaks fluent Arabic and he's teaching. 17 or 18 years old girl, mashallah, she's teaching the little girls now, the six, seven, eight. She's their teacher. She's 16, but she's a teacher. Why not? Now she's struggling out of nowhere. And the parents, they have a nightmare. Mashakil. Why this mashakil, ya khwan? Hmm? Number one, ihmal ha'ula shabab. No, that's number one. They are neglected. They were neglected by their parents, by the community, by the society, and that's the result. Youth who just waiting to turn 18 to say to their parents, you can't tell me anything right now. No, we want a youth who is 18 or 20 and say, he knows the ayah, وَقَدَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Somebody who's going to tell his father or mother, you don't have to worry about me. I'm going to do my best to be the, the best child you ever have. Please, father and mother, make dua for me in sujood. Allah accept your dua that Allah keep me. Make dua that Allah keep me upon this path so I can do better. If you think I'm doing good, I want to do more. I love you. I want to do more for you. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep me firm upon this. But this is going to take, ya khwan, some efforts, some knowledge. We the parents, we have to be serious about this. We the parents, we have to be serious. We're responsible, we're going to be asked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And we have to be serious and we have to start learning ourselves and set the good example. Our homes, they have to be a Muslim home for real. Not like some people, they go and buy something online, a sticker, right? And put it in the front of the house and say, this is a Muslim home, please remove your shoes. All right, people are going to remove your shoes and come with Bida. Now, yeah, the shoes, this is a problem, the shoes? What about the innovations? What about the sins and the mixing? They can come, they're allowed in the house, no problem. But the shoes is the problem? Shoes is not the problem. We're the problem. We have to clean our homes from innovations, from sins, from disobedience to Allah. Some homes, mashallah, mixing, music, movies, this, TV in every room, including the kitchen. They don't want to miss anything. Classes in the masjid upon Tawheed. Uh, one of those days. One of those days. Now we have to clean our homes. Our homes, they have to be Muslim homes. 
Sunnah is practiced. Quran is recited. Not only recited, is manifested, is practiced. Because our children, they see in us, the parents, father and mother, the example, the way I treat their mother, because that's their mother. That's when he's going to treat his wife one day, inshallah, the mother of his children. Wahakada. The girls, they learn from their mother as well. How she talked to their father with kindness, with respect, doing all of this to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not for, for others. We do it to please Allah because that's what Muslims should do. And we have some time. We, we eat together. We go to the park. We take them here and there. Why can't we sit and read a chapter of Talatat al-Usul? Why can't we sit down and read an ayah or two with a tafsir with them? And then inshallah, it may, become, may be difficult at time at the first, but if we are consistent and we do want it with, with, with joy, because we want it, and we explain to them that this is very important, this is good, this is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gave us everything we have. All these beautiful things we enjoy is from Him. And we're going to remember him. And we're going to praise him. And we're going to learn more about him. Because the more we learn about Allah, the better it is for us. And it will become easy for us to comply with his commands. <coughs> Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, the schools that we send our children to, the Shaykh, he says, play a big role in the upbringing and the cultivation of our children. We're going to send our children to any school. And then when they grow up crooked and doing bad, we blame them. We can't do that. Sheikh Muqbil ibn Hadi al-Wadi'i rahimahullah, he used to use this example, this line of poetry. For those amongst us, with the grown-up, parents especially, who we neglect the education and the upbringing and the cultivation of our children, and then we easy to blame them. He says, Ramahu fil yammi maktuf al aidi, thumma qala lahu iyaka an tabtalla bil ma'i. It's like the example of someone who tied someone's hands and threw him from a bridge into the river and said to him, don't get wet. Is this possible? Can you throw someone? You don't have to tie his hands. But this one, he tied his hands. I don't know why. And he threw him and he said to him, don't get wet. Is that possible? That's not possible. What do you think? This man, he has wings and he's going to fly? He's going to get in the water. And he's going to get wet. Maybe he's going to get hurt, right or wrong. Based on how deep the water or shallow, that's the case. Some of us put our children in any school, let them hang in any corner, talk to anybody. We give them notepads, and we give them smartphones, and we give them and we said, go to your room. Why? Because the father want to be somewhere by himself. And then later on, day after day, month after month, year after year, you don't know what that child is doing in those corners, who's talking to him or her. You don't know who they've been talking to on those phones and those notepads, huh? those smartphones. Now, when you find out something that you don't like, you run and say, why you do this? Instead, as we mentioned before, we have to blame ourselves and take the blame for it and try to rectify the affair. After that, Yahwan, the role of the house became the role, as we mentioned, of the schools. Al Manahij, Al Ilmiya, Ikhtiyar al Mudarisin al Salihin. The Sheikh Havidullah Ta'ala he says the curriculum has to be a good curriculum. We're talking about the Islamic studies curriculum. Naam, they, they study in math, they study science, physics, whatever, English, but they are Muslims. They can be good in math. They can have PhD in math and science and chemistry all together, but if they fail in Tawheed, where are they going to go? Hmm? If they fail in Aqeedah, 
You think those PhDs combined is gonna help them? That's why our noble Shaykh, Shaykh Rabi' ibn Hadi, Hafidahullah ta'ala wa matta'ahu bis sahha wal afiyah wa ghafara lahu wa li walidayhu wa li al-muslimina wa al-muslimat, ameen. He suggested, he says, he would love to see that in the Muslim schools, they give precedence and importance to the aqeedah, to the tawheed, to the Arabic language, to the Quran, to the tafsir, to the seerah of the Prophet And with that, you can teach them science, you can teach them medicine, why not? You can teach them IT, mechanic, electrical engineering, you can. But they should not fail in tawheed. They should not fail in aqeedah. Now you find people, they have PhD. He's, I don't know what, they don't know anything about their Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يَعْلَمُونَ ظَاهِرًا مِنَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا They know some of this dunya, mashallah, they great and good at what they know. But when it comes to the akhirah, هُمْ غَافِلُونَ When it comes to the matter that they need in the grave, they will need when they stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ The day when no wealth, no children will be of benefit, they don't know. <clears throat> they didn't have that which they needed when they stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is important. This is important. We sh we should, it should be in our minds as parents, as a community. We need schools for our children. I want my children, my boys, to be taught by good teachers, righteous teachers, teachers who have sound aqidah, sound manhaj, good akhlaq. Why? Because the teacher have impact on a child. No, right or wrong? No. The children, they look at the teacher and with respect, and they spend a lot of time with the teacher, right or wrong? And they will copy from them. They will pick up from their manners from their behaviors. Likewise, we want our daughters to be taught by righteous teachers, female teachers, that they fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They upon sound creed and aqeedah and manhaj, manhaj as salaf. Female teachers that have the great akhlaq Teachers who wants to make it to the Jannah. Teachers who put obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before anything else. But how all of this is going to happen? We're going to wait for the government to do this for us? It's not going to happen, man. We will do it. And if we put our minds in something, we'll do it. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees that we want good, Allah will grant us the good. It may not happen overnight. It may not happen next year. It may happen 10 years from now, but we plan for it. And we make it one of the most important subjects of our discussions. Brothers, what are we going to do for our children? What are we going to do, man? Sending them to public schools, man, that shouldn't be a choice. Sending them to so-called Islamic schools run by Ikhwanis and Sovies that teaching them all things that they don't supposed to be learning. That's not, that's not good. That's not good for us. It's not good for our children. We got to do something about this. Let's start somewhere. Even if you start with one grade. One grade. You can afford first grade. And you start. Next year you add another grade. But you have good teachers. Who have sound creed. Sound aqeedah. Aqeedah is salaf. Aqeedah sahiha. Because they are the ones that are going to teach our children. As our noble Sheikh Sheikh Rabi Hafidahullah Ta'ala. He says. A math teacher with a sound aqeedah. Will benefit your children. Not only in math. In aqeedah as well. Because if the children do something, say something, he will correct them nicely. Because his aqidah is sahih. His creed is sound. Now you send your children to Ahlul Bida, 
to learn math and they learn they learn with that lot of deviation and innovations and now you have to do the cleaning we have to be serious ikhwan like i said we start somewhere we start somewhere barakallahu fikum and tawfiq is from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as'alu allah li wa lakum at-tawfiq we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us all tawfiq especially with the parents the grandparents the elders in the communities we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us and aid us so that we can get together and we can you just take some effort and energy and zeal so we can get together and do something for our children start something for our children and for their children so they can learn the proper aqidah the proper akhlaq the quran this arabic language the akhlaq of al muslimin and i ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to preserve and protect our youth boys and girls our sons and daughters may allah protect them from trials and tribulations because they are surrounded by all types of trials and tribulations and temptations lusts and desires we have to equip them with iman sound iman they can use it to fight once they out there on their own you're not going to be with your children wherever you go may allah preserve our children as well and may allah make us parents a good example for them جزاكم الله خيرا بارك الله فيكم وصلى الله وسلم على محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا